Welcome to the Secrets of the Bible Channel. The last time the Tree of Life is seen in the Bible when you think about the Tree of Life what usually comes to mind. Maybe it's the beautiful Garden of Eden, or the promise of eternal life or perhaps is the disobedience of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis. But there's more to it than just being a tree in a garden. It's deeply rooted in the story of humanity and our relationship with God. This tree is a source of hope, a reminder of what was once within reach, but got lost you. But here's a thought. What if I told you that the tree of life didn't just disappear after the Garden of Eden? What if it made a comeback in the Bible? Not just once, but several times before its last appearance in the book of Revelation. The tree of life in Revelation. In Revelation, the curse of the Garden of Eden and the division caused by the Tower of Babel is reversed. Representing the renewal of the nations. This is depicted in Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 2, which says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for, for the healing of the nations. Isn't it striking how the tree of life, once forbidden access to the lost paradise, now reappears in this new perfect world. The tree becomes a source of healing and unity, bringing together the divided nations in a restored creation. The tree of life reappears in a very different setting. It's no longer just a representation of eternal life, it has a renewed purpose, the healing of the nations. It signifies not only the restoration of what was lost in Eden, but also the reconciliation and healing of all humanity. The tree of life stands as a testament to God's promise of a new life and restoration. Significance of trees in the Bible. Throughout the Bible, trees often represent life and growth. For instance, in Psalms, the righteous are compared to a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. Similarly, in Proverbs, wisdom is described as a tree of life to those who embrace her. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 18. Do you see the pattern here? The tree of life is more than just a physical entity. It's a powerful representation of sustenance, wisdom, and life itself. It's fruits and leaves. The tree of life in Revelation has another significant aspect. It's fruits and leaves. The tree produces 12 kinds of fruit, each month yielding its fruit. This abundance represents God's continuous provision and care and the leaves of the healing of the nations. They signify restoration and unity. Remember the Tower of Babel, where humanity was divided by language and scattered. Now, in Revelation, we see a reversal of that division, coming together of all nations under God's healing grace. Isn't it remarkable how the Bible ties these narratives together? From division to unity, from cursing to healing. Why is the Tree of Life important? Have you ever paused to think about what the Tree of Life really is and why it's so significant in the book? The Tree of Life is first mentioned in the book of Genesis in the story of creation. It's described as being in the midst of the Garden of Eden, alongside the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Here's what's fascinating. The garden itself is often seen as a type of temple, with God dwelling there, making it a sacred space. So, what does it mean that the Tree of Life was in this divine garden? And out of the ground the Lord God made to spread bring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The Tree of Life was in the midst of the garden. Genesis chapter 2 verse 9 This positioning of the Tree of Life isn't just about its location. In ancient times temples often had images or symbols of life and fertility, representing the presence and blessings of the deity. By placing the Tree of Life in the garden temple, the Bible might hint at something unique, that this tree represents God's life and presence given to humanity. It's as if the tree is an embodiment of God's own life and sustenance, available to Adam and Eve. Isn't it intriguing to think of the tree of life as a direct connection to God's life-giving power, the initial access to the tree of life? In the narrative of Eden, Adam and Eve had access to this tree symbolizing their direct access to God and eternal life. Imagine a world where the first humans, Adam and Eve, lived in perfect harmony with their Creator. This isn't a fairy tale. It's the beginning of humanity's story as told in the Bible. Before Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden, 
their relationship with God was unlike anything we know today. Let's walk through this story and see how it connects to the tree of life. Adam and Eve's relationship with God in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve joined to direct an unbroken relationship with God. They lived in a paradise, a beautiful garden where everything they needed was provided. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. This garden was more than just a place of physical beauty. It was a space of spiritual harmony. The relationship between Adam, Eve, and God was intimate and personal. Imagine walking with God in the cool of the day, talking face to face as friends do. That was their reality. God wasn't a distant figure. He was present, involved, and deeply connected to them. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. Doesn't that sound like the ultimate relationship? Where was the tree of life in Eden? This tree was actually in the center of the Garden of Eden, representing life in God's provision. Now, when it comes to connecting this to its location in the book of Revelation, it gets quite interesting. In Genesis, the tree of life is in the middle of Eden, suggesting it's at the heart of God's creation and a central part of the paradise he created for Adam and Eve. It's like a symbol of God's provision and presence in the midst of his creation. In Revelation, the tree of life is found alongside the river of the water of life, flowing from God's throne. This again places the tree in a central, important position. But there's a shift here. While in Genesis, the tree is in a physical garden on earth, in Revelation, it's part of the heavenly city, a new and perfect creation. Isn't it fascinating how the location of the tree of life, from the first pages of the Bible to the last, tells us of God's enduring relationship with humanity, from creation to eternity, God's rule. The tree of life was a sign of the eternal life and fellowship available to Adam and Eve, as long as they remained in relationship with God. The tree of life was a symbol of the life-giving relationship they had with their Creator. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die. Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 through 17 This wasn't just about fruit, it was about trust and obedience. Would they trust God's word and command? The tree of life lost, sadly. We know Adam and Eve didn't obey God's rule, tempted by the serpent. They ate from the forbidden tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, breaking that trust. The consequence was immediate and serious. They were banished from the Garden of Eden, losing access to the tree of life and that perfect communion with God. It was a tragic turn of events. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. Genesis chapter 3 verse 23. This loss represented more than just physical death. It symbolized a spiritual separation from God. The intimate relationship that Adam and Eve enjoyed with God was disrupted. No longer could they walk with him in the garden. Their disobedience had created a barrier. This was heartbreaking. The loss of access to the tree of life signified a deeper tragedy, the rupture of the intimate relationship between humanity and God. Yet even in this moment of loss, there was hope. The story of Adam and Eve sets the stage for the rest of the Bible, a story of redemption and the restoration of that lost relationship. While they lost access to the physical tree of life, the Bible tells us of another way to eternal life and restored relationship with God. Isn't it amazing how one act changed the course of human history? And isn't it even more amazing to think that the story doesn't end there, but continues with the promise of restoration and hope? When they disobeyed God, not only were they banished from the garden, but also from the life-giving tree. Think about it. After the fall of Adam and Eve, when they were banished from Eden, it might have seemed like the end of the story for the tree of life, other appearance in the Bible. Moses in the lampstands. Imagine being Moses standing on Mount Sinai, receiving instructions directly from God. Among many things, God told Moses to create a special lampstand, not just any lampstand, but one that would have a deep meaning and connection to God himself. God's instructions were detailed and specific. He said to Moses, You shall also make a lampstand of pure gold, 
The lampstand shall be hammered work, its shaft, its branches, its bowls, its ornamental knobs and flowers. One piece. Exodus chapter 25, verse 31. This wasn't going to be an ordinary piece of decor. It was to be crafted from a single piece of pure gold representing purity and value. But why almond blossoms? The almond tree was the first to blossom in spring, symbolizing new life and the freshness of God's ongoing work. This emphasized how God is always doing something new. The seven lamps were to light up the tabernacle, which was essentially a large tent in God's dwelling place among the Israelites. It was a symbol of God's presence, a reminder of the tree of life, and a foreshadowing of the light and life that Jesus would bring. It connected the earthly tabernacle with heavenly realities. And the almond blossom spoke of new life and renewal, themes that resonate throughout the Bible. Crafting this lampstand, Moses was not just following God's architectural plans. He was bringing a piece of heaven into the everyday life of the Israelites. It was a daily reminder of God's light, life, and presence among his people. Isn't it fascinating how a single object like this lampstand can carry so much meaning and connect us to the larger story of God's work in this world? Wisdom in Proverbs Throughout the Bible, this tree of life keeps popping up, metaphorically speaking. For example, in Proverbs, wisdom is described as a tree of life. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 18. This is a way of showing that God's wisdom and ways lead to life. Reflection of the life that was once freely available in Eden. It's like the Bible is constantly reminding us of what was lost and what can be regained. Again, in Proverbs, we see the tree as a metaphor for life-giving words and actions. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and whoever captures souls is wise. The mention of the tree of life shows up again in the design of the tabernacle, and then in the temple in Jerusalem. There are features that remind us of the Garden of Eden. Both these sacred spaces were adorned with a golden lampstand, fashioned in the form of a stylized tree. This wasn't just a decorative choice. The lampstand symbolized light and life, much like the tree of life. And it was a deliberate nod to the Garden of Eden in Genesis 2. It's as if these worship spaces were miniature versions of the Garden of Eden, reminding the Israelites of their connection to God's original plan for humanity. But then comes the challenging part of the story. Like Adam and Eve, the nation of Israel faced choices. Would they follow God's commands and be a source of life and blessing to the nations around them? As promised in Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 through 3, and Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. Or would they turn away and follow their own path? Unfortunately, the history of Israel is marked by many moments of turning away from God, leading to exile and hardship, a sharp contrast to the abundant life symbolized by the tree of life. However, the story doesn't end there. Prophecy of the Messiah, Jesus. The Bible speaks of a hope that emerges from the ashes of Israel's failures. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 13 and chapter 11 verses 1 through 5 prophesy about a remnant. A shoot that would arise from the stump of Jesse, a reference to the coming Messiah. This Messiah, unlike Israel, would succeed where they failed. He would embody the righteousness and life-giving qualities of the tree of life, bringing restoration and hope, new access to the tree of life. When Jesus the Messiah came into the world, he did something remarkable something that changed the course of history and our access to an effective spiritual life. Unlike the first humans, Adam and Eve, who failed in the Garden of Eden by choosing to define good and evil for themselves, Jesus showed complete trust and obedience to God. This is crucial because through Jesus' life and actions, he did what humanity couldn't do. He brought the possibility of abundant life to everyone. For the Bible often refers to Jesus' crucifixion as him being hanged on a tree. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. Also, Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 mentions, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Acts chapter 10 verse 39. These references are not just metaphorical. They signify something deeper. A cross or tree becomes a unique point where Jesus bridges the gap between humanity and God, offering a new way to access the life that God intends for us. Now, let's think about the tree of life that we first see in the Garden of Eden. Referring back to Revelation chapter 22 verses 1 through 2 describes a tree that sits by a river flowing from God's throne, 
producing 12 kinds of fruit and leaves that heal the nations. It's a big picture of life, abundance, and healing. But have you wondered how this connects to Jesus, the work Jesus did? Especially through his death and resurrection can be seen as a fulfillment of what the tree of life represents. Jesus, in essence, became the source of life, much like the tree. He offers a way to eternal life and a restored relationship with God. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he, it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. John chapter 15 verse 5. He's the vine and we are the branches. Isn't that powerful? By following Christ we're given a choice between life and death, a theme that resonates throughout the Bible. Jesus' victory over death. His resurrection is a crucial part of this narrative. Have you ever pictured what the new heaven and new earth might look like? It's a scene filled with hope and restoration. And right at the heart of this vision is the tree of life. Now, think about what this tree of life represents. In the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, the tree of life was God's life-giving presence and the eternal life He intended for humanity. But after Adam and Eve sinned, the book of Revelation says it's in the center of the new heaven and new earth. It's like a full circle moment from paradise lost to paradise restored. But why is the tree of life so central in this new creation? It's because it represents God himself, his eternal nature. This tree standing by the river flowing from God's throne shows a direct connection between God and the life he gives in John chapter 4 verse 14. Jesus says, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. It's a future where we'll have immediate and unending access to God. The tree of life also invites us to reflect on our current relationship with God. Do we see him as the source of life, as central to our existence? Are we drawing near to him, enjoying his provision and care? As we ponder these questions, we're reminded that the story of the Bible is one of restoration. From the Garden of Eden to the new heaven and new earth, the tree of life stands for God's unchanging nature and his eternal plan for humanity. It's a symbol that spans from the first pages of Genesis to the last pages of Revelation, weaving a narrative of redemption and eternal life. In essence, the tree of life is more than just a part of the scenery in John's vision. A future where life, in its fullest sense, is available to all, right at the center where God dwells. Isn't it incredible how a single symbol can carry such profound meaning across different parts of the Bible? The tree of life connects Genesis to Revelation and everything in between, reminding us of God's enduring plan for humanity's redemption and the promise of eternal life. So, as we reflect on these stories of the tree of life in the Bible, we see a theme of loss, hope, and restoration. From the Garden of Eden to the New Jerusalem, the tree of life represents God's unending provision of life to us. This journey from Genesis to Revelation tells us a story of how God's plan unfolds from creation through human failure to ultimate redemption and restoration. What does this all mean for us today? In Revelation, the tree of life represents hope and the promise of living forever. Available to everyone who has faith, it's no longer guarded by cherubim as in Eden, but freely gives its fruit and healing. This represents the fulfillment of God's plan a restoration of the intimate relationship between God and humanity that was lost in Eden. From creation to fall, and from redemption to restoration, isn't it amazing how one symbol can carry such profound meaning throughout the entire biblical narrative? It's a story that not only connects various parts of the Bible, but also speaks deeply to our lives today, offering us a glimpse of the hope and restoration that is to come. This is an incredible promise of hope and a future where we reign with Christ for eternity. The story of Jesus and the tree of life is a living invitation for us today. It asks us a fundamental question. Will we choose the life that Jesus offers, becoming part of this eternal life-giving tree? In this way, the story of the tree of life woven throughout the Bible becomes our story too, inviting us into a life that is rooted in Christ and stretches into eternity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray. We come before you today with hearts open and minds reflective, pondering on the symbol of the tree of life, which graces the pages of your holy word in the book of Revelation. We see the tree of life once more standing as a source of your eternal promise and unending love. 
May they come to understand that the river of life flows from your throne, offering refreshment and renewal to all who come to you. Lord, we ask for your guidance as we navigate the complexities of our world, just as the tree of life yields its fruit every month and its leaves bring healing. Let our lives be a source of nourishment and healing to those around us. Help us to bear fruit in keeping with your will, serving others with love, kindness, and compassion. We pray for the healing of the nations connected to the leaves of the tree. In a world often divided by conflict, misunderstanding, and pain, we ask for your wisdom and peace to prevail. Guide our leaders and those in authority that they may make decisions that promote unity, justice, and peace. Father, as we reflect on the tree of life, we are reminded of the interconnectedness of all creation. Please guide us to take care of the earth and use its resources smartly while respecting the fragile balance of life that you've created so beautifully. Let us always remember our responsibility to look after the world you made 